back years ago, I remember when we would make communion calls, I would go to this house, and when you walked in, it was so filled with stuff, just all kinds of stuff. And it was piled all over the place. And even getting into the room, you know, there was just a, a narrow path that I would have to walk once I got there. And, and I could tell that, you know, the owner had taken great pains to clean off at least one chair so that I could sit there and talk to them. <laughs> Today we call them hoarders. But back then, there was no name for it. It was just god-awful. <laughs> you know, and I remember that. And, and it was one of those things that, you know, every first Friday I would think, oh, I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. You know, it's just so cluttered. Just kind of the chaos of the whole thing. And I think of that because today we hear about fasting in the first reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah and again in the gospel. And you know, some people fast, as Isaiah tells us, so that somehow, well, you know, this is my bargain with God. I, I'm going to do this for Lent, or I'm going to do this every Friday so that, you know, God, when I talk to you, you'll listen to me because, you know, see what a good person I am. I'm doing this for you, you know, and this is part of the bargain. I do this for you, and then I expect you to come through for me. And Isaiah says, really? Really? Do you do those things to think that somehow you're going to get something from God? This is some sort of pay-it-forward purchase price? And I'm going to say, you know, when we look at our lives and we look at what we do during Lent, you know, it's an important thing to ask ourselves that question. Why are we doing it? Why are we doing it? I want to go back to that house because I always think about that chair being cleared off because I know that after I left, it started getting filled up again until the next first Friday, you know, when it would be emptied again and the stuff would be stacked somewhere else. But, you know, our lives are terribly cluttered. Even though it's quieter now during the pandemic and with the cold and the snow, you know, we're staying inside, but, you know, our minds are cluttered with all kinds of stuff. We're thinking about all kinds of things, you know, organizing, planning ahead. Even here, you know, when we come to pray, it's kind of like, oh, yeah, when I get to the store after I leave here, I better make sure I pick up milk, you know? All those things kind of go through our heads. We're cluttered. What fasting is, is just cleaning out a space for God. Not that it's going to do anything, but somehow to clean out that space for God so that God and I can just sit there together for a time. To give God room so that we can enter into a conversation that sometimes will be filled with words, sometimes will be one-sided, Sometimes we'll be in silence. But it's just the being together with God. Do I get something out of it? Always, always. You know, but is it necessarily what I ask for? No. But then God only gives me what I need, not necessarily what I ask for. Those are many times not the same thing. <laughs> You know, but, but that's what fasting is about. It's creating this space so that God and we can sit down together and just be in one another's presence. And then that always leads to doing something, you know. That's what Isaiah says. You know, th this is what God really wants of us, to help bring the kingdom of God into this world by the way we act to release those held captive, to somehow fill up those who are empty, to strengthen those who are weak, that somehow whatever we do should touch lives of others in a way that will help them be better people, see to their needs, and be the answer to their prayer. Years ago, I remember I was praying, and I remember saying, you know, God, why don't you do something about this? 
And somehow I knew God's answer. David, why don't you do something about this? When we open that space, sometimes when we're sitting there with God, we can hear God speak to us and tell us what God truly wants of us.